Okay, what's going on, everybody? Welcome, welcome to part two of the podcast. Uh, we again have uh, Mr. Ralph Terra back. Continuing on, and um, of course, I'm joining my host, my co host, CW. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I'm here. I'm here. <laughs> And so we're going to just jump. We're going to just going to jump into where we were at before. So, Mr. Terry, go ahead and go ahead and um, for those who never heard the uh, the Dial House Radio, please tell them about what it is that you and the beautiful, lovely, awesome, spectacular. I love India. She's just so full of energy. I just seem just so sad. I've never met her in person, but I've had many of conversations. With her. Really? You never met any other person, huh? Never met any person. Well, because she was supposed to come to the we don't have to. but she had uh, an issue come up, but um, a personal issue come up, and she wasn't able to attend. So I've never had the opportunity to meet her. Meet her. Well, we're, I'm gonna have to see about changing that one. But um, the radio show that Indy and I do is called High Sugar Tea. And originally when we were doing the show, it was going to be like, you know, an entertainment porn show where we just bring on people in the business and talk. But over the course of our show, when, we, when, it, was re, when it was redone, the show became more of a focus as to not just, the, not just what happens in front of the camera, what goes on behind the camera. Um, over, over the last two years of our show, we have actually broken, and we were the people to break some, some, some stories that in a business, like we we were the ones, and I, I I'm going to say names because this is now it is not a matter of hearsay. This is actual fact. Uh, about a year and a half ago, porn star Bella Rose went on on Twitter, and she posted this really long rant and video about why she doesn't shoot with black men, right? And she tried to say that she doesn't shoot with first. She tried to say she doesn't shoot with dark skinned men because she does she hasn't found any of them attractive. And then she went and she said that, that women in the business only do anal because they, they, they need to stay relevant or they have a bill to pay, and they're just trying to, to, to save face. And, you know, a lot of times when, when people say stuff online, you know, you expect the trolls to come at you when you say something. But what she didn't expect was the fans to come, I mean, not the fans, the talents themselves to come after her. So uh, we were going to, we were going to, you know, he poured that that night, and then when we were getting ready to go, I actually hit Bella Rose up, and I said, "Listen, you know, we're, we're going to talk about your your post that you put. Would you like to come on the air to state your case?" And she did. She came on the air, and she started to say to everybody how she felt, you know, about her stance. She said, "No, that's not what I meant," and all this other stuff. And we really thought we were doing some good, and, but as that, we came to realize that perhaps what we should do, since everybody wants to to cover the, the, the goings on in the business, but on the production side, in the, in the front side, maybe we need to highlight some of the problems and issues that go on in the porn business. So we, were, we brought that one. We were, the first, we were the first news outlet that broke the case against Derek Hay uh, from LA Direct Models because Adria, Adria Ray came on our show and started telling us about her treatment with, by LA Direct Models to her. We also broke the uh, the case with Jovan Jordan when when he was saying how he was treated on set by by Layla Falcon and others. I believe that was from Dog Fart, but we broke that case. And the last I case called, that we I broke, called, was, I called in for that show because I I know more than a little bit about that and what's what was and what wasn't said. And that's mainly because that individual who you just said like. I have a personal disdain for, so. I, I'm sh- I'm sure that it it was personal to people. It was something personal with him. And one thing that we also do is that when when we when we bring on something that that could potentially be a very hot topic, you know, we Indy and I felt that it would be wrong just to take one person's side of the story, because in every single story you have your side, the other person's side, and somewhere in there is the truth. So when that when that when he was on the air, and originally Jovan Jordan didn't want to come on the air. He, he We had talked to him. He's like, I don't want to come on the air because I don't want people saying something about me. But over the course of the few days after we originally talked to him, people he felt that people kept coming after him on Twitter. So he, he was to the point, he's like, well, what do I got to lose? So he came on the air. That that show is still our highest rated show with, with no type of promotion 
it had it has gotten like by now I think it's like almost half a million listens have listened to that show. That that's a lot that have listened to that show. And um he stated his case, but we also reached out to the people that he was talking about and they did not want to come on our show, but they were sending updates to Twitter, to XBiz, and we're like, Why don't you come on our show? Because the man the man is on the show. You can confront him directly. And they didn't want to do it. They can't control the narrative but, then. Of course. But the one case that we broke that I am certainly most proud of is the case with Rico Strong. We broke that. We broke that case. After Leah Raven went on on her YouTube rant about her treatment by Rico and, and, and just Dave and all this other stuff, we contacted her about coming on the air. And she didn't come on the air, but her girlfriend Nikki Hart did. Nikki Hart came on the air, and Bobby Dylan came on the air to talk about Rico. But then I got Rico to come on the air himself. And at first he was hesitant, not because he didn't know us. He was just like, you know, I don't know if I should just let my lawyer handle this or whatever. But, but then he felt like, no, I want to talk because people need to hear what I got to say. Because, you know, like you said, they're controlling the narrative. So we brought him on the air, and we put all three of them on the air at the same time. And we came to realize that little by little that we were less believing Leah Raven's story. That there, there, was, there was huge parts of her story that did not make sense. <clears throat> and then later come to find out that the, that the director had been videotaping them since the time they walked through the door, and every single thing that she said was a lie or over-exaggeration, if you want to be like that, an over-exaggeration of the truth. But we, we were the ones to break that story. And then the last big story that we broke was um, – it wasn't the Derrick Hay case. It, oh, Mr. Marcus. Mr. Marcus and Tasha Rain. We oh. broke that story, right? And there still hasn't been a conclusion to that. Still hasn't been a conclusion to that one. We brought. We we also highlighted the case, the, the complaint made by Anna Fox against the AVN. We brought to light that. Um, and then other little things like Christiana Sin, the, the 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 abuse that she faced. I mean, because we're looking like this, you know, our, our industry, to a large degree, is good. I mean, we 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 work and and deal with a very unique industry where sex is what what it is. However, behind the scenes, there is a lot of dirt that goes on in the business: sexual abuse, sexual misconduct. Um, Certainly racism, classism, you know, and it, it, would, it would not be prudent to have a, have a show that deals with these highlights and we, we don't never say nothing. We, we just like look, look it over, look over it or forget about it. Right. That, that, that's, not, that's not what we are because, because these type of things affect everybody in some way, shape or form, right? If it doesn't affect a performer today, it certainly can have the possibility to perfect you tomorrow. Like recently, we, we, we did an entire show about Bill 2389. You know, we did a whole show about Prop 60 to let everybody know that, hey, this is what's going on in your business. That is not all about shooting in front of the camera and, get, and getting that money. You got to worry about the long-term effects as so long as you're going to be in this thing. And, no, and those two bills would have been crippling to the porn industry. And in reality speaking, it didn't make sense. And even now, with, with what we had a show about a month ago, because uh, the porn union, APAC, is having a fallout with their mother union. So we had on the board of APAC and the board of the mother union come on to, to possibly solve their dispute. And it turned into a big crap show. Because the woman in, that was at the top of the AE, AEW basically feels like she's the one that created the union, so she wants all the credit and doesn't want to listen to anybody else's opinion. And she was the person that originally gave the, the state of California the information for Prop 60, and she felt, well, I don't know how bills are, are made or created. And you got to pass the first half, then you turned around and did it again, and that's where Proposition 2389 comes from. 
you know, and she doesn't want to hear how she's wrong or how, because she's like, well, I just didn't know. Well, the question is, if you don't know what you're talking about or how this is done, why are you even opening your mouth? Shut up. <laughs> I will say this. I'm uh, sorry. I do know we have, I, I know I've referenced uh, that house before on a past podcast, but I don't know if I was on live, like we were on live, or was it uh, off camera? Or off audio, but it was referring to uh, the Makana Man uh, situation. So yes, Makana Man. That that was the most recent thing, and that that was extremely that was extremely problematic uh, because of the fact that it happened during Exotica in New Jersey last year. And now Makana Man is someone who I've known. I've known him now for a couple of years, and I do consider him a friend. Mm-hmm. So when that happened, right now, he, now McConnell man came to Exotica that Friday. He was at he was at he was at the Woe Boys booth, him and Woe Boys and and, and Buddha Bank. But then that Saturday he wasn't there, and people started asking, and said, "Yo, Ralph, did you hear about McConnell man? Did you hear about McConnell man?" I was like, "What happened?" And they told me. And I was like, "Nah, he he didn't do that. He he did not go around using the force test. He couldn't have did it. Turns out that it was the truth." So, so wait, what happened? Do you remember, remember, well, I don't know anything. I refer to you all right, ba- as. Okay. So, all, right, what, all right, basically what had happened is that McConaughey Man was at Exotica in New Jersey last October, and he was shooting with a female talent, and he gave the girl his, his talent test. When the girl scanned the QR code, come to find out that the test was a year and a half old. Oh, so he shit. had been going around. So he had been going around shooting with with an old test. Right. So when I found out about it, I gave him a call and we were talking about this thing. I wanted him to come on the air to, to air his side of the story out because I'm I'm a fair person. I'm not I'm certainly not just gonna take what one person says and just roll with it. I wanna hear both sides of the story. So we had him come on and he did come on the air. He he, he was pretty pretty open with what was going on. But the issue was that a lot of the talent that was listening to the show that night were either texting me or hitting me up in the DM and saying, no, Ralph, he, he, doesn't, he doesn't feel remorseful, you know, and, what he, and the things that he's saying, why he didn't get the test. And some of the stuff, I agree with him. I, right, if, if you're not shooting all the time, then spending that 250 for the test every month, and especially out of California every two weeks, is, is a waste of your money. I don't understand why talent testing will let you go through regular insurance to do that test. And I don't under to a degree. I don't understand why co- production companies won't take a test that you can get from your regular doctor over talent testing. I know there are reasons, you know. However, if this is the business that you're in, then you have to follow what the business wants. Yeah. But a lot of talent was feeling that he wasn't remorseful. That the reason that that you gave out as to why you couldn't get the talent test is irrelevant because they have to go through the same thing. They're doing it. They're paying the exact same money that you are. So they're looking like if they can do it and they're in California, you're in New New York, New York, where you don't have to get tested every two weeks. Right? So they weren't trying to hear that. And they were even saying, if you were really struggling that bad, Couple things. If you were really struggling that bad with the money, you didn't reach out to anybody to see about them helping. You didn't reach out to any of the companies that you work for and ask them could they pay for the test, and then out of the money they're going to pay you, you give them the money back. You didn't do that. Yeah. You didn't reach out. To, you didn't reach out to any of your friends that are in the business. They know can y'all help me out. You didn't do that one. And then the most damaging thing was is that now he said that he had gotten tested by his regular doctor. So the question was, well, well wait a minute. If you keep getting tested by your regular doctor, then why do you just present that instead of presenting an expired test? Yeah. So all sure. those things made him look super guilty. Yeah, because like I know, right? Me and yeah, did ashamed. discuss this, and like because he said he was uh he was ashamed if he was went to that place. So. Oh, that's bullshit. And that and that's exactly what a lot of people felt. A lot of people felt that it was bullshit. That he wasn't ashamed. That he that he he was like, listen, I got caught. I did what I did, and y'all just gotta deal with it. And then some somebody asked on, in our chat room, and said, well, if you if the girl didn't scan the test, would you have kept doing it? 
He didn't sit there and say no. He said, I don't know. See, stuff I mean, like that true, may... Because it sounds like he already did it. Right. Because, because exactly, because you you've been doing this now for a year and a half. And the only reason you got you stopped is because the girl happened to scan the QR code, which then puts in the question all the companies that you work for, like why weren't they scanning the code? Yeah. You know? And once again, it it put a bad light in the industry. Number two, the East Coast doesn't have that level of respect in the West Coast's eye. The West Coast really think the East Coast is a bunch of amateurs. That do dumb shit. And that. now, he, and, and now, and now, here you go. Here's another example of what we're talking about. Someone from the East Coast doing some dumb shit. So you you just gave them more ammunition to keep down in the East Coast. And there's a lot of good talent. There's a lot of good talent on the East Coast that are amateurs that are busting their humps to get noticed by the West Coast. My my client Melanie Cummins is one of them. You you have I mean Destiny Dream does does in that classification, but you have others. You have Diamond Ortega. You have Sonya Harcourt. You got Reezy. Um, Nadia White is from the West the West Coast. I mean I mean hell. I mean, East Coast, I mean, hell, if you really want to be honest, Scar- Scarlet Scandal come, hails from the West Co- East Coast. She comes from Florida. So there, there, is, there are talented people here. Lexi London, you know, Ma- Maya Marina. There are talented people here, men and women, that just need a break, that just need that one shot to, to, to do a big, to work for a big company However, because you're here on the East Coast, you're under that stigma that you guys are amateurs, that you don't that you don't want to pay people. You just want to use talent. You want to put you want to put the West Coast girls in the four hour pussy hotels. You don't believe in lights. You don't believe in talent testing. You don't believe in makeup. You don't believe in cameras. You want to shoot with cell phones. Mm-hmm. All these different knocks and. Why people will constantly go and do shit to to, to just reinforce that one is beyond me. Especially McConnell man who was getting booked by major companies, Brazzers, uh, 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 American porn star, that you're getting booked by West Coast, West Coast to shoot with them. You're supposed to be bringing it up, and then and it's, it's always not your responsibility to to bring the East Coast up. Now I'm not sitting there saying that's what you're supposed to do. You're not supposed to bring the other people yeah. to the East Coast up. That's what. That's what this will do. But you, it, it is your responsibility to drop the stigma of saying, nah, there, there, is, some deep, there is some good talent on the East Coast that just need a break. Like, yeah, I have said this all the time. Stereotype. Right. I said this all the time. If you really want to look at it, two of the biggest porn stars in the last 10 years come from the East Coast. That's Lisa Ann and Azza Akira. They come from the East Coast. Mo the Monster comes from the East Coast. The Star Sisters, you know, now Rome Major, like I said, Scarlet Scandal, all from Sarah J, all from the East Coast. Well, I would say with They're, that, I think with the East Coast out here, because, you know, being I'm, I'm from the Midwest, but out here I've noticed that, yes, like porn industry seems like a transition or something someone could do out here, but people from the East Coast – they look at it as an actual career. Like this is the movie's career worse where I feel like out here on the West coast, you have a lot of people that get, uh, I did porn for a couple years and then I became, then I did something else. Like I got a regular job. And I, and I, I have, I have said that all also like for everybody, I said, let's say, listen, unless you're in that upper 1% of the porn business, you're not shooting like that, you know, and like Anna Fox, Misty, uh, 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 Adriana Chesnick, all of them, they're constantly shooting because they're that upper 1%. The, the second and third tiers, it's not a bad idea for you to have a job, that, that a regular job that you do. So, one, it keeps your mind focused on when you're sitting and not shooting and you don't get into these levels of depression. Number two, it puts money into your pocket so you can pay for the production that you are, whether it is you're trying to do your own productions or it's just, or just your outfits, your look. Try to establish your look, you know, and and it pays for you to be able to travel to different things because you you still gotta pay to travel to go places. It ain't nobody's gonna come get you and pick you up and say, oh well, we're just gonna pay for your way to California. No, these are the things that you have to do, you know. And 
but people don't want to hear it. They want to hear, well, I'm in the porn business, I'm in the porn business. And like, but the porn business is bigger than you. You know, it's not like you're the only girl or you're the only guy out there. Yeah, you know, they have, people. right, there's plenty of people. And more importantly, if something happens, like like right now, if you guys were filming somebody, let's say, and you was gonna have scarlet skin, or she got sick and she couldn't make it, or she couldn't do it, you can you got the ability to call somebody else that's local and say, hey, listen, Scarlett's gonna do this thing, but she couldn't do it. Though, do you want to get involved? And they can say, yeah. If you're here on the East Coast, you don't, you don't have that kind of flexibility. That's true. You know, no, you you have to make this stuff work for you. So when I hear that, when I hear people say there's no East Coast talents. Yes, there are. When they say there's no East Coast production companies, yes, there are. I mean, you got Bang Freak Mob. Bang Brothers. No, you got. No, on the East Coast. Yeah, yes, Bang, Bang Bros and Reality Kings are on the East Coast. They're in Florida. But you have other companies. Like I said, you, you, ha you have Freak Mob. You have Woe Boys. You got Mr. Nuts Productions down there in, in Florida. You have production companies that you could work with, right? And my other hype, is, my other gripe is that when people keep saying, well, they just, people just want to shoot for content. I, I, I am, and, that, and this is me speaking as a, as a manager, I am not 100% cool with people wanting to just shoot, trade for content. Because first, seems... first of all, like... okay, I got a question, no, a questions about this. Because um, okay. when I see shoot for content, it's sometimes when I see people like, oh, we want to trade content, we're going to trade content. It's almost like we want to fuck, but we don't want it to be for nothing. But then at the same time, I feel like who does the content benefit? Does it benefit? It, it feels like I feel like it benefits the bigger names sometimes. Sometimes it'll uh, put somebody over. But I feel like a lot of times, like for 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 the guys, it really puts a lot of guys over when girls do content with them. But I don't see how it really improves. I don't know. Sometimes I feel like it doesn't really improve a woman's status unless it's a guy of note. You know. All right. I'm. I'm okay. Bring okay, it down. Okay. This, this, all right. This, this is what I'm saying. The, my my first gripe with the trade for content is that is that a lot of people don't know what trade means. They, they don't get that concept. You know. Yeah. This is the thing. If 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 you if you are a male talent and you hit up like. Since we said, like Scarlet Scandal, let's say you have Scarlet Scandal. She said, "Okay, let's do trade for content." You, the trade has got to be equal to what she is giving you. She is giving you a boy girl scene. What, what are you giving her? Mm -hmm. See, and they said, "Well, I'm just going to, I'm just going to give her. We're going to, we're going to trade the content." No, 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 no. That's not equal to what she's giving you. She's giving you a boy girl scene where you're going to get the content and she's going to get the content. So what's the trade? And that's and that's the first thing that a lot of people don't understand. That it has to be equal or better than what I'm giving you. It's like if if I have if I got a Michael Jordan rookie card and I'm going to trade you, what are you going to give me if you're not paying me? What are you going to give me equivalent to a Michael Jordan rookie card? You can't say, well, I'm, I'm, I'm going to give you the third stringer for the Lakers in 1966. Who cares? <laughs> Who cares? It's not, it's not, it's not equivalent to Michael Jordan. So what right? do you think is so a, it, um, a good – what do you think is a quality content trade? Okay. If if, a, if it, now it, it strictly depends on what kind of scene you want to do. Let's say you want to do a boy girl scene, and you say, but well, I don't do content. I'm doing content trade because I can't afford your rate. And and this guys, once again, I'm talking to to the people out there and, and that's listening to the show. If you're in the business and you're saying I don't know how to do this, I'm gonna tell you how you do this. If you go to a trade event and you meet porn talent and you and you're really serious about coming into business, step number one, have your shit together. Right? Present to them a website, a OnlyFans, a a a, 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 a Pornhub page where your work has been displayed that they can see who you are and what you have done. Number two, have references. So if a girl says, Who have you worked with that I can get in touch with let me know how you are? You can't just say, Oh man, no, the stripper at, at at the Golden Palace. Nah, that don't work. But number three if you are going to approach a main star about doing trade for content, 
if you could say, well, like, I'm about to say, listen, Scott, listen, my name is Ralph Terry. I'm just starting out in the porn business. No, I really like your look. I would really love to shoot some content with you. But listen, I know your rate is X amount of dollars, and right now I'm not in a position to, to do that. However, if we could please do a trade for content, what I would, what I would do is I will, we, we could do the trade, and in the exchange you do me the same, I will do an entire photo shoot of you free of charge that you can use for promotional events because I know everybody needs, needs new pictures. I will help you design a website. You know, or, or if it's something where both of you are going to get the content, I said, this is what I'm going to do. We, we, we'll, we'll both share the content. However, I will give you a six-month window where you can put the content up before me to earn some money before I even do it. Uh -huh. You've got to make the... You got you see what I'm saying? You got to make the trade interesting to the girl. Don't you tell them, well, I just got that good dick and some good smoke. They don't need... They, they, they got their due for that one. Hell, they nowadays, they... They they can go get a fu a fucking Hitachi, get yeah. good dick and get get smoked and not have to not have to listen to your bullshit. The trade has always got to be equivalent to what the girl is giving up, and it doesn't matter if it's a boy girl scene or a POV blowjob scene. And, and to the girls out there that sit to say, "Well, I don't know what I'm doing," let me explain this to you too. If if you do if you do agree to do a trade for content scene. Like I just said, make sure that the trade is equivalent to what you're giving up. And with that being said, you should not be doing anything more in a trade for content scene than either a boy-girl scene, a girl-girl scene, or a POV blowjob. Gang bangs, DPs, anal scenes are out as far as trade for content because they can't give you anything that's equivalent to that. Nothing. Okay. Ex except except actual dollar bills, they can't give you any trade that's equivalent to any of those three things. There's just no way, none, unless unless they are going to give you the keys to a brand new Lamborghini, which you know they're not doing because they they had the keys to Lamborghini, they could pay you. Right, right. That's what that's what trade for content is. Now the other part of that question is trade for content even worth it? Yes and no. Because you are absolutely right when you say you see the benefits of you go to Scarlett and say, I want to do travel content with you. Scarlett already knows with her with the name she has or in the name that she's building what the content will do for you. But what are you going to do for her? What What's her advantage to doing it? Right? That right. That's, a, that's a bigger issue. So, yes, men and women, be selective in who you agree to do travel content with because – the only people that really should be doing trade for content, beyond people that know how to maximize the footage themselves, are people that are just coming into the business so you can start building up your library so people can see what you have done. Then that does make sense. But even then, you don't want to spend your entire career doing trade for content. You may do, let's say for the sake of discussion, maybe 10 different trade for content scenes. So now you, you now now you have a catalog of material that you can show other people saying, Hey, this is what I've done, this is who I work with. So they can see what your fuck face is like. They can see if you if you believe in lights and makeup and, and wigs, you know, and hell, if you just got good hygiene, you know. Yeah. They, uh, maybe maybe some sense of what your acting abilities were, right? or, or and, and for guys, girls can see what your stroke is like, how big your dick is. You know, they can see all these things. They just ain't going to sit there and take your word for it. Oh, I got I, my, my stroke is good because they know other girl ever complain. And I, I got to say this too. Fellas, and I mean this with all my heart, when you are in, if you really want to get in the porn business, understand this. What you do in the bedroom with Benita that was drunk from the club the night before is not what you're going to be doing on, on a film set. Okay. It's not. It's not with no. You are not going to be pounding some girl out forever. That's not going to happen. You are not going to be alone in a room with a girl forever. That's not going to happen. There are going to be other people in that room. There's going to be there's going to be but there's going to be a production. There's going to be a director. There's going to be a camera guy. There may be a the the the, the ball light guy that's got a cam that's got a light underneath your ball sack. You know you may have other performers on set. You know, so if you if you if you can't get your dick hard with other people in the room, then, then stop playing yourself. Stop pretending. Mm -hmm. 
You can't do it. You know, Brian Jeremy years ago gave me the best piece of advice, and we were just talking about. He said, he says what he tells guys is that invite for a guy that want to get in the porn business. Invite every single person that you know to your house, your mom, your dad, your sister, your cousin, your minister, your your teachers, your best friends. Get up on the table and jerk off in front of everybody. If you can do that to completion, then you can do the porn business. Because that's going to be what, that's, because that, that right there is going to be the audience is looking at you. Because if you get into porn, your brother, your mother, your sister, your preacher, your best friend, they're all going to see you. They're all going to see you in your natural state. And if you can't complete it in front of them, then you can't do it on set. Hmm. So with the changes, with the changes in how like porn works now, um, do you think someone can like survive without dealing with any, uh, major, uh, any, any actually major production companies if they did it, like if they knew the know-how of what to do with their images and videos? Yes. Yes, they can. If you if you are in the porn business today, because the porn business today is vastly different than what it was 20 years ago. And because now you have not only do you have social media, but you have Chris for sale, you have webcam services, you have OnlyFans, premium Snapchat. If you legitimately know how to maximize yourself, you could make a business and possibly be dependent strictly on porn if you know what you're doing with all the tools that you have in front of you. The problem is that everybody doesn't know how to use the tools, right? They, they seem to feel that, oh, you know, I'm coming to the game, I got a big ass, I suck dick good, or a guy like I got a big dick, and that's all that I need. And no, that's not the truth. You need a whole lot more. You need a whole lot more, right? Being able to film... Right, like for an ex- for an example, and I was just t- I was just telling uh, someone this day. If I was in California, if I was in middle town, I was in California right now. You know who I'd be shooting with? All, all time ahead, I would I would shoot a scene, three different scenes. I would shoot one with Cali Confidential, Sizzy says, and if I if I could do it, let's just hit this say Anna Fox. Okay, so I shoot three different scenes with them. Right, and now I, I, but I have a, a, a Snapchat, a premium Snapchat. I got an OnlyFans. I got a clip for sale, I, and I also have camp, a cam site that I'm on, and I got beyond my Twitter, Instagram, all that stuff, and I got a, um, I don't know, a many vids. Okay, this is what you do: you take your three scenes that you got with Anna, uh, Callie, and Sizzy. You edit them all, right? You put. One of the scenes up on many vids, you put another scene up on your clips for sale, and you put another scene up on your your uh, your OnlyFans. Okay, you let it sit there for a month, and then you take those three scenes that you just did with whatever scene you didn't want. Like let's let's say on your OnlyFans in 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 June, you put up the scene you did with Sizzy. Let it sit there for a month and see how it sells. Then. In July, you turn around and you put this thing that you put the next thing you put up is one you did with Anna, <coughs> and then the next month go by, and then you put up the other thing that you did with with Sizzy, with Callie, and with you 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 keep twisting the turn, you keep twisting the the scenarios. So in one month you got on three different platforms, each platform you're changing the scene so that because everybody is not following you on every single one. Yeah, and you and we already know that everybody's not going. Everybody that's not going to follow you on OnlyFans and find you on many vids and then vice versa. But you're going to put the scene, and eventually all three of your scenes are going to be in every single format. But you're not putting them all. You're not flooding the market at the same time. Yeah. You're putting one here, one there, one there, and that, even at the time of you of you doing that one, you're still shooting new content with other people, because because now you you have to keep giving them new more stuff. You can't just give them three scenes and feel like, oh, that's enough. Now I made it. No, no. Now you got it. Now you got to do some other stuff. So now, now you start hitting up other people that you could probably reach out to. So let's say, once again, I'm in California. So let's say you reach out to Naomi Bias, and then you reach out to to Kitty Jaguar, and you reach out to Carmela Clutch, and you feel something with them. 
you may, as a guy, you may want to, or it can work, you may you may just want to do solo stuff where you're, you're masturbating because there is a big market for that one. A lot of guys' vanity comes into question there because they don't want to do it. But you're doing it by yourself, so why not do it on, on your cam and make some money from it? Because there will be people watching that stuff. Whether it's a guy that, that's homosexual or there's a woman, you know, or it's a guy that, that has it on because his girl is into you, and he's saying, well, shit, I could put this thing on because he's doing this tonight, and that's going to give me some pussy because it's going to turn my girl on. You have, sometimes you got to think out the box to make some money. Yeah. You know, but people, people get so bogged down, like, well, I got to do it this way. I got to do this, this, and this, and then they don't open themselves up to the possibilities of other ways to do stuff. And that's why you can't, that's why most people can't survive strictly on just porn. You can't. Very few people in our business, I don't give a goddamn how many times I tell you this, and they popping bottles, they doing this, this. If you can't diversify the stuff that you're doing, you are done. All you guys got to do is look over the, look over every single person that's in the business right now and look and say, what else are you doing besides this? If they're not, do, if they're just, if they're just relying strictly on shooting with a major company, and they're not figuring no other way to do something, they're not doing anything. They're, they're, they're just, they're just getting by. That's all they're doing. You know, you, ha you have got to take control of of your likeness, take control of your image, and market yourself and push yourself out there, or you're going to die. And I don't give a goddamn how big your ass is. I don't give a goddamn how big your dick is or how big or how much you can deep throat or, or how much you can eat pussy. If you can't do that part, you can't diversify yourself, you are finished. It's not even worth you getting started. Interesting. And, like, like I, like I said, then look at Misty. M Misty, she does shoot for major companies, but she also shoots for herself. She 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 does she has done other things. She she did mainstream television, mainstream movies. She was in the, she's in the video game. She did she did a, she did a she did a rap record and wasn't intended to do it. She just did it. You know she did a play. You know you have got to you have got to look at more. And, and any millionaire would tell you that one. You have got to have multiple streams of income coming income coming into your your household. That's what you got to do. And in porn, that that statement bears. Nothing else than that one. You gotta have multiple ways because everybody is not like right now. You got a bunch of girls in the porn business that are sitting in their house, pissed off because there no one is shooting shooting with them, mm -hmm. right? But that same girl who all the time was shooting never bothered to go to go get a camera herself, never bothered to go get a tripod, never bothered to go get some lights or just use natural light and. Never learned how to shoot her stuff for herself that you can do by yourself because even even though you're not shooting for brasses or 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 or, or porn or, or um doll for anybody, and you got to own you got only fans, you can still put pictures up there. You what got the ability. What, what kind of camera ever, should you use? Yes. I I I have a night the camera I have right now is a Nikon thirty one hundred. That's the camera I have, right? It's 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 a it's a it's a uh, it has a detachable lens, but it takes pretty damn decent pictures, right? Anything with a high resolution, whether it's a 4K camera like you, Nikon, Canon, Sony, right? Do not do not get a point and shoot camera. No, uh -huh. don't get that one. I know some people have taken stuff for the, if you have an iPhone, I've seen some of the pictures on the iPhone, an iPhone, if you have an iPhone, the iPhone can get you by. But once again, you better, you, what I will, what I will tell people to do is if you get a camera, get a computer, and for God's sake, get some editing software so you learn how to edit pictures and photos. I mean, photos and videos. Yeah. That you learn how to do that, where you're not dependent on somebody else. Because nowadays, nowadays your focus should be cutting out the middleman. Yeah. Right. Oh, with this pandemic going on right now, a lot of people are not able to go to California or Florida or wherever to go shoot something. So you're sitting there, right, and you're sitting there and not knowing what to do because you don't have a camera. 
You don't have a webcam. You don't have anything. But but you uh, you always found money to get some weed, to get some Hennessy. <laughs> True. You know. But you but you didn't take any time to invest any money into your career, which is realistic speaking, your business. Your brand, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I looked at I looked at myself when I when I started when I really started getting into this business, and I used to go to events as media, and I used to have a little point and shoot camera that I would shoot pictures with, and one day I said, you know what, man, it it, it I don't look professional, I don't look right because you got guys coming in here with big cameras with detachable lenses and detachable flashes, and I got this itty bitty camera that looks that that looks like a cell phone. I don't look right. So that next year, I got my income taxes back. The first thing, the first thing I did when I got it, it went right to Best Buy and bought that that Nikon thirty one hundred camera. Now I look more of the part. Look the part and be be prepared. When I when I when I'm covering the event, I have my camera. I have a small little point and shoot camera that's, that's in the extreme emergency because sometimes I'm in places where I can't take. My big, like, for example, the white party. I really can't take, I can take my white, my camera when I go to the white party if I'm taking pictures or on the white carpet. But when I go into the actual party, they won't let me use my big camera. But I still, but people still have to take pictures. So I got a little point and shoot camera that takes very good pictures that I can take in low light. They still get stuff done, so I can still post things like, "Oh, this is where I was at. This is where I, I got, I got, I got exclusives that I've taken with that little point and shoot camera from inside the white party. Everybody else's pictures that you see online, they're all from the white carpet. They're not from the inside of the party itself. But I take pictures on the inside of the party, unless unless people are just taking pictures on their cell phone camera because it looks like a cell phone, you know. But that's my point. If you if you don't at this stage right now, if you don't have it, if you don't have your own equipment to do certain basic things, but you can get the money to get weed, get liquor, get the get the new Jordans or the new LeBrons or the new Fendi or Prada, then invest that same money in, into your product, in which is you. Yeah. Okay. See what you're saying. That's that's how I see that one. But the long answer to your question is that yes, you you can make it. You know, you can do it, but. When you do that, that's where it comes into your hustle material, your hustle mentality. If you don't have it in you to hustle, then you can have all that stuff, and it's not going to work because you're not going to put the full forth effort into it. Because it takes a lot to run all your different websites, and and it might be an all day thing for you. But you got to ask yourself: Is it is it worth it? If I take six hours here. And I'm 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 put I'm loading this video to many videos and I'm loading this video up. I'm calling people to shoot shoot stuff with and I'm 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 editing pictures and I'm 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 posting Instagram posts. Is all this stuff worth it? Is it making me any money? And when you start looking at your, at at your responses, the people find you, are are they are you, is it getting your followers up? With the followers up means that more money is coming into your coffers. If that's what's going on, then yes, it is absolutely worth it. But you got to put forth the effort because no one's going to give it to you. No, And no one's really going to sit there and give you the playbook to how to get this done. You guys are sitting where you're at right now. Nobody gave you the playbook on how to get you to this point right here. You guys figured out how to do this thing, and now you're sitting there. And and people people are coming to you asking you, hey, how did you do this? I worked hard. Well, can you help me? No, because I had to work hard. You got if I got to work hard, you got to work hard. You right. You know, there, there, for this, there really isn't any kind of shortcuts. You know. There really isn't. You you got to work hard and you got to put forth the effort. If you're not gonna put forth the effort, then why are you here? Because if you just if you just wanted to have sex, you you could do that on your own. Oh you oh you oh you just want you just want to fuck bad bitches. You could do that on your own. You ain't gotta be in the poor business to do that. Oh, I want to make some money. You could do that everywhere else but the porn business. Now you said to say, I want I want to build a career. I want to have a lasting name in this business because because I truly love sex and I really want to make it. 
Now you're talking. Now you're talking smart. I want to build a career. How do you plan to build it? What are you going to do to make it happen? You think you're just going to sit back and let girls suck your dick, or 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 let let or or, or you're going to be a girl and just like dominate some guy? Nah, that's not going to happen. Because because as, as bad as you think you are, everybody else in porn looks better than you, and willing to do more things to get it done. You're you're not you're nothing more. And I hate to I hate to bust people's bubbles, but in reality, when you first come in the door, you're nothing more than another dick or another pussy. That's all you are. Right. You got to prove you got to prove why you're here. You got to prove why we should work with you. You got to prove why we should give you a chance. And if you can't do none of that stuff, see you later. Because the turnover rate in this game, and you guys, you guys know this better than anybody. There, if you go AVN, there's like 300 girls there at most. Go back to next year. At least a quarter of them girls will not be in the game. Will not no longer be there. And out of that quarter that's no longer that's not there, a quarter of that one will be out of the game completely because it fizzled for them. Some women, I'm surprised, are still in the game. I'm surprised. Cause I just didn't think they had it in them, but they did. Wow, that was a lot, wasn't it? Yeah, <laughs> that was. <laughs> that was a lot. But I'm, I'm, but I, I, I mean, I, it was a lot. But I'm, I'm really. I'm really passionate about this because I just like, no, it's a business and we got to treat it like a business guys, guys and girls out there. You know, it, it's like I said, it's the, it's the adult movie business. It's the porn business. It's not the porn hookup. You know, this, this, this is not, this is not, um, uh, uh, what's, what's that website where you can find people? Um, Tinder? Adult friend finder. Well, it's not adult friend finder. It's not Tinder. It's not, it's not, um, what's the one where they like, like, couples can find, and people can find each other that, that uses the Natalie Cole song? I forget the website. But the, the one they find, like, you know, we can find you, you know, love or friendship. No, nah, it's none of these things. And it certainly isn't back page, back page. It certainly isn't that neither. It's a business. Treat it as a business, and it can be a business. You're going to treat it like I'm just here, then you can just be gone. Well, shit. That website will come to me later on. I can't think. I remember, I didn't know, I seen the video, the, the commercial with the guy standing there, and, and, they're, and they're playing the Nally Co song, This Will Be Behind. He said, you know, I found the love of my life on this website, and blah, blah. I can't think of the name of it. I can't think of the name of it, but it will come to me later on. Oh, oh, was that Love Match or Love Match or something like that? Yeah. I have no that, idea. Yeah, Harmony. something like that. Thank you. Love Harmony. That's it right there. It, this, 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 it, this isn't the site. This isn't the place. Ooh, like I said, that was a lot. And if I can, if I can, th there's a couple of porn towns out there that I personally like that don't get the recognition, that don't get the notice that I think they should. And I try, like every Friday I do my follow Fridays, I like to highlight people who I see that I think are, are really sexy or really cute, but I think get to the work. Like I have, I have said that underrated, the two people who I think are the most underrated in all the porn, one is Sissy Says. I really like that girl. I think she's cute. I think she's adorable. I see why she doesn't get the notification that she does because she's very outspoken, you know. And I think, she, and I know she knows that it, it knocks her for stuff. But I think she is a damn fine talent that just doesn't get noticed. And the other girl I think is is um, Naomi Star. She's another one, another damn fine talent that's that's. Her issue is that she's Asian, but she's a big, she's, she's muscular because she works out, you know. But that girl, that girl does everything. She does oral, anal, girls, everything, you know, and, and she works out. 
but she, but the two of them, they, I've always put them at the top of my. Um, I don't understand why you're not working more or less. The two of them, right? And they they work they work for people. They work for them, but I just think they just, they're just very slept on, very slept on, and they need to stop being slept on. You know, I think uh, you know what you're talking about, and I believe yeah, like that hurts her because like she's really she's really muscular, you know, and she's quiet. Mm-hmm. The, uh, mm-hmm. So that hurts her also. Um, and with everybody else, you said I agree to it to an extent. Um, there's certain things I don't want to say online about certain people, but like to an extent, I fully agree with everybody else you said also. I just feel there's a stigma about um, why certain people work and why certain people don't work. And I believe sometimes it's not the girl's fault. It's just so many backstage politics, and it does lead into the entire racism and things like that. So, Oh, I agree. I agree with that one, too. But hopefully, once this pandemic is over with, and we all get back into the business of, of our business, then perhaps uh, people's outlook will change. I do yeah. hope that one, that people's outlook will change, you know. And because everybody, I already said, I, I said, I think that when this is over, everybody, it's going to be fuck slash 2020 out here. Yeah, it's going to be That's crazy. What I, it's going to be. And I'm not even talking about shooting. I'm just talking about people just fucking be fucking. Yeah. I agree, but no, but I, I, that's what I do hope. I hope that we we see a change and like, look, let's get everybody a shot and to see what they can do, and then we just take it from that point on. You're right. Yeah, you're absolutely right. So, but yeah, so here yeah. we are again at the very. Uh, go ahead, everybody, where to find you at, really quick, sir. Sure. Anybody that wants to get in touch with me, you can find me on Twitter. My handle is Porn Warrior. On Instagram, I'm simply Mr. Ralph Terry. You know, you can DM me if you want to ask me some questions. And um, like I said, every Friday from 11 to 1 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, I, I do a radio show called Hot Sugar Tea with former porn star India. You know, um, call into the show. We have a good time. Let me know you, you heard me on here and put you on the air if you want to chop it up some. But that's where everybody can find me at. All right. You can find me at Christopher underscore Willie with an IE, not a Y underscore J on Instagram. You can also find me at CC Fitness LA on Instagram, CC Fitness on Facebook, and CC Fitness LA. And uh, on Twitter and at the ccfitnessla.com. Okay, uh, we are Burbank Misfits on Twitter and on Facebook. Zap Burbank Misfits on um, Instagram. R A W S C A R R on Twitter and on Instagram. Please tune in next week, and I believe we should have Anastasia Rose on. So, hope you enjoy um, the podcast and have a very fantastic uh, week. And please tune in next time.